All right, guys, welcome back to Tool Talk. The focus of today's video is going to be Japanese hand saws, and there's a lot to talk about, so let's get right to it. So for those of you who've watched any of my videos, you know that I love Japanese hand saws, and I don't even own any other type of hand saws because all you need is Japanese hand saws. Now, that's not to say that there aren't amazing European and North American made hand saws. Um, I'm not trying to say that Japanese saws are the best, it's just what I learned on and it's what I prefer. Uh, I love the Japanese handsaw because it works on the pole stroke, which just gives you a much you know, more in tune sense of the blade in my personal experience, as well as just the speed and I just can't say enough good things about Japanese handsaws. But I know there's a lot of you out there that just could say the same thing about your European or North American handsaws and I got respect for that too. I'm sure if I use those saws, I would love them. Here's a quick overview on Japanese handsaws. This saw right here is the standard Japanese handsaw. It's called the Ryoba saw, which stands for two sides. So on one side of the blade, you have your rip cutting teeth for cutting with the grain. And then on the other side, you have your cross cutting teeth, which are made for cross cutting the grain. So you basically get two saws for the price of one. Genius. All right, now let's go over the differences between handmade Japanese saws and machine-made Japanese saws. Now, not much has changed in the design of a Japanese saw over several centuries now in Japan. The saw consists of a blade, which has a several inch long tang that goes down into this wood slash rattan handle. Basically, it's kind of set up similar to the Japanese katana. And the handmade saws, you will have a really strong keen sense of your cutting blade. Because the tang goes deep into the handle, you feel very connected to the blade. The main difference between the handmade blade and the machine-made blade is obviously that these teeth are all sharpened by hand. I think they might even be cut by hand, as well as all the teeth are set by hand, and the blade is even put on a specific anvil, and they use what's called a sen, which is kind of like a draw knife for steel. And the craftsman will actually shave down the middle of the blade on both sides so that there's less friction when you're cutting the wood because the blade actually has a slight hourglass figure to it, meaning the thickest parts of the blade are right where the teeth are and then the inside is relieved. So when you're cutting, you won't get as much friction and pinch from the wood on the blade as you would if you're using a, a blade that had a uniform thickness all the way across. So obviously the attention to detail and the craftsmanship that goes into a handmade saw makes it a better saw to use. But I will say that you're, you're not gonna be disappointed and you can get really good and you can get equally good results from a machine-made saw. It's just gonna take a little bit more practice getting there. It's not that the blades aren't razor sharp like the handmade saws. Um, the steel is made out of a stainless steel. It might not get to, it, to the exact same degree of sharpness as say these high carbon uh, non-stainless steel handmade saws, but the blades still take a really, the blades are still stupid sharp out of the package and because of the stainless steel is really hard wearing steels, they stay sharp longer than the handmade saws. So the weak points of the machine made saw are that the blade, is, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't believe that they use the same process of thinning the blade, but the blade is still precision made. All the teeth are set within super fine tolerances and sharpened to perfection. So this is still a precise sharp cutting machine. I would say that the only weakness is in where the blade connects to the handle. Because this is a mass produced saw and it's generally made for everybody from the homeowner um, to the craftsman, um, they've made these generic connection methods. Instead of having the long tang that sits down into the handle that requires you know, a hammer and a bit of skill to kind of release and send away for sharpening and putting it back together, this and that. These replaceable blade saws just have a simple screw that you undo and then the blade slides out. So you don't quite have the same. Uh, so I would say that that is the major difference maker between the machine made saw and the handmade saw is, is just not having that continuous blade deep into the handle. But when you have that blade screwed on there tight, like it's still a very, still a very stiff and rigid functional tool. 
And due to the fact that these are readily available, they're much cheaper than handmade saws and you can get replacement blades instead of having to send your blade away to have it professionally sharpened in Japan. Um, these saws are really the only way to go for us guys in North America, in my opinion. So this little nine and a half inch Ryoba saw is pretty much on me all the time. It's my most used saw. If you're looking into getting into Japanese hand saws, I recommend this little nine and a half inch Ryoba. It even works on large timbers. It cuts super fast. It has fine teeth, so you get a really high quality cut. You will not be disappointed in this saw. It is a phenomenal tool. The Japanese Ryoba saw you can kind of get in all different sizes with larger blades, even smaller blades, and even finer teeth blades. And these are also available on my Amazon store. And for those of you who don't live in the United States, and I know some of you guys are frustrated because Amazon won't ship to your country, especially you guys in Canada and maybe other places internationally. I have personally ordered a shipment of the three most popular selling size saws on my web store and I will be able to ship those internationally for the same prices that they sell on Amazon. So bear with me all you guys that can't get Amazon to ship these saws to you. Soon they will be available to everybody and I'll do a little video and shout out, send out an email to make sure you don't miss that opportunity. Moving on, there's a number of other Japanese style saws other than the Ryoba. And that would be the Dozuki saw would be my next favorite. And you can get a, several different styles of Dozuki. This is a rip cut Dozuki. So this is for cutting uh, the rip section of your dovetails or tenons, any kind of joinery where you're cutting with the grain. Um, the Dazuki saw means like a, has a stiff spine on it. So it keeps the blade from bending as you cut. So this is a very accurate saw for smaller scale joinery. Obviously because you can only cut as deep as the spine before you run out of room. This being the cross cut Dazuki, you will be amazed at the thickness of this blade. We're talking, it's about a 32nd of an inch thick. The teeth are super fine, super sharp, and this thing just cuts phenomenally. It also has a replaceable blade. You just unscrew this little thumb screw here. The blade slips out. It's a super flexible, thin blade. I will also have replacement blades available for all these saws. So for you guys that already own a saw, you save yourself a bunch of money not having to buy the whole handle system and you can just buy the blade, which is almost half as much. Another favorite Japanese saw of mine is this super low profile saw. I use this for getting in behind door shims in the corner, cutting shims, all sorts of little flush cutting, hard to get to applications. This saw is great. Depending on the manufacturer, they all kind of have different blade fastening systems. Uh, this one you actually just it's just pressure fit in here. You bend it forward and it kind of comes unhooked. This saw is actually, I have actually seen this saw available in several hardware stores in the United States as well as here in Canada. But I'll try and put a link to this one on my Amazon store as well if you want to get your hands on one of these little low profile saws. Now there are a number of other Japanese saws, but I find when it comes to just doing uh, the woodworking and joinery, building furniture and general kind of construction, uh, these these two Dazuki saws, as along with a couple different size Ryoba saws, is really all you need. You can pretty much do anything with those two different styles of saw. And for those of you guys who are wondering what brand saw this is, this is the Gyokucho saw. I'll spell it right here at the bottom for those of you guys who, who want to do a little bit more research on the saw. But I will say that I've used a number of different uh, mass-produced, machine-made Japanese hand saws, and the Gyokucho saws, in my opinion, are the highest quality and give you the best cut. But feel free to buy the, the cheaper ones if you want to try them out. They, they still work, but you will find that when you actually try a Gyokucho saw compared with the cheaper ones, like this one's a different manufacturer, and I can tell the difference in braid away when I'm cutting with these two different saws. But uh, this one's kind of my uh, beater on the construction site saw. I'm not too worried if I hit a nail or whatever with this one because I don't use it for fine cutting joinery. I kind of have my beater saws and then my high end saws. For those of you who haven't seen my little Japanese saw rack, I made a video on this. It's a really simple design. You, you could probably just design it yourself and make it in an afternoon. And I find it's really handy to have your saws kind of up and out of the way. It keeps the teeth protected and they're always easy access to grab when you. So make yourself a saw stand. It makes your saws look sexy. Come on. I will say that it's kind of hard to go wrong with these saws costing anywhere from uh, you know, 50 to $75 and the replacement blades being actually a lot cheaper than that. It's probably the best bang for your buck that you're going to get. I know a lot of European um, hand saws 
will cost you far more than that. And then you actually have to sharpen all the blades yourself, which requires a lot more skill. So I do highly recommend these for not only the seasoned woodworker, but also the beginner, especially if you don't have a lot of the big machinery in your shop or the expensive power tools, you can do, you can cut pretty much anything with these saws. It's obviously gonna take you a little bit more time, but with the proper practice, you can make super clean, super accurate cuts and build projects start to finish with just your simple hand tools from your chisels and planes and saws. So for those of you guys who are wondering, you know, like what tools do I buy first? Do I buy the power tools? Do I buy the hand tools? I recommend buying the hand tools. Get yourself, you know, a few smaller chisels, a few medium sized chisels and a few large chisels and then get yourself a couple hand saws and maybe even just one or two planes and you can pretty much build any furniture you want with just those three different types of tools. And in Japan till this day there are traditional carpenters who only use hand tools start to finish whether they're building furniture or entire homes. There's post and beam carpenters in Japan that will cut the huge beams, all the cuts with just a hand saw and trust me they can they move quick through the wood. I'll leave a couple links to some really awesome Japanese woodworking videos and YouTube channels where you can see guys using these saws to cut just phenomenal joinery in large scale. So be sure to check out all the resources that I've put down in the information box below. And don't hesitate to go to my Amazon store and just buy the place up. It's really. If you have any questions or comments to make about these Japanese hand saws, please leave them in the comment section below. If this is your first Tool Talk video, be sure to check out all my other videos on the rest of the tools you see here on this bench. You'll likely see them in the suggested video bar or on my YouTube channel with Samurai Carpenter. Samurai out.